Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need the Lacert Tax software to follow along, although I do think they have a 30-day free trial. So if you can get access to a promotional version or a demo version of it to practice with, it could be a good tool to use. We're going to be focusing in on the Form 1040 and credits related to the 1040 for dependent care credits. And we're going to be jumping back and forth from the detail to the forms so we can run different scenarios, the software making it easier for us to do so. Our starting point will be a married filing joint filing status with Eric and Jane Smith living in Beverly Hills 90210. We have the one dependent, that being Tom Smith, who is a qualifying child for the child tax credit. We're focusing here on the dependent care credit. But just realize qualifying child for child tax credit. We want to distinguish those two credits. We then have the 100000 of income. We're starting off with both spouses then earning some income, having earned income. That's going to be one of the requirements that we'll be considering as we go through this credit scenario. We have the 24400 because they're taking the standard deduction as married filing joint, bringing the taxable income to 75200 Going then to page 2, we then have the tax being calculated at the 8,632 by the software, and we have the child tax credit at the 2,000. Again, this isn't the one we're focused in on. We're focusing in here now in the dependent care credit, meaning we have actual expenses that we are expending that will be the basis on which the credit will be calculated. So I'm going to go into the data input here, and we're going to say note that we have both uh, spouses are, are having some earned income. That's going to be basically our starting point. I'm going to go to the input for the form 2441. And we're going to say now that we have some expenses for Tom. Now, remember the basics here when you enter the information into the system for this credit. We're thinking about expenses that were incurred in order to free up the spouses to, to work. So we, that's kind of our, our idea. So we're going to need the information for typically a dependent, usually a child under 13. And then we're going to be adding the institution if it is an institution or the details uh, related to the, to the caretaker. So I'm going to say Tom and just pulling over Tom here. That's going to be the child that, that uh, we have. And we're going to say then that the expenses were 5000 That's going to be over the amount that we're going to be able to use in order to calculate the deduction, but just want to put that there. Then we also need the organization or persons that's going to be involved. Now, I'm going to choose the organization, which I basically just made up. This is the this is the people that are taking care of Tom here, so they'll free, free our time up. So this is going to be the address that's going to be needed. Uh, no foreign address, address where care, where care provided if different. So it's going to be the same. And then, of course, we need the identification number. Now, if it's an institution, it'll most likely, most likely look something more like this for an EIN number. If it's a social security number, it's going to have three digits, a dash, two digits, and then a dash, like a normal social security number type of identification number. So, or, And then these are California, so I won't go into that. Total amount paid uh, to care provider in 2020. I'm going to say this is that same 5,000. So notice this is kind of matching out now to the individual that's being taken care of is matching out over here. And then we're going to say, let's keep it at that and then go to the forms up top. And then if I go to the forms, then on page two, we have then the 600 on line 20. So um, remember, that's different than the 2000 for the child tax credit that is coming from from the schedule three line seven. So if I go to then the schedule three, like uh, line seven, there's the 600. It's coming from line two here, which is a credit for child and dependent care expenses. And now we've added form 2441. If we go over to 2441, that's going to be the child and dependent care expenses for form 2441. And then up top, we have part one persons or organizations who provided the care. So the so IRS wants the information about the person or organization, which we have up top, including the social security number and how much was paid to them. And then they're also going to want the credit for the child care uh, care expenses. So here's the information of the person, Tom Smith. That's going to be the dependent. Obviously, the social security number there, the amount that was provided, the 5000 Notice that it's capped out at 3000 so we're not getting the full you know, benefit related to the other 2000 here. It's capped out at the three. And then basically based on the income, we have this 20% that's being multiplied times that 3000. And that's going to give us our 600 here that's being calculated. So just to get a better idea of that, let's say, okay, well, that I should get the same 600 if I reduce the amount that I paid to that 3000, meaning... If I go back on over and say, all right, the amount that was paid is I'm going to put 3000 here. 
and I'm going to put 3,000 here instead of 5,000. And that should be the max kind of benefit that we're getting, right? We're going to say, okay, that's still giving us the 600. If I go under the 3,000, that's going to start to reduce the benefit. So I'm going to say, okay, well, what if it was like 2,000 here and 2,000 here? 2,000, 2,000, what would happen then? Well, then now it's going to reduce the benefit, of course, to the 2,000 times the 20%, that 20% being based on basically the income uh, thresholds that you can see on the left-hand side. So now we're at the 400 as the benefit. Now you can then adjust the thresholds of income to kind of see where you would land uh, in, in these kind of areas. So if I was to go to my, my detail and say, well, what would happen like, because I took 20% there if my income was like 50,000. So let's say, let's say, or let's just say it's 40,000, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20,000, 20,000 for each. And then I'm going to go back on over. So now it's at the 22% that we're taking of that 2,000. And that's coming from this table that you can see over here and the 22% then. So here it is from 39 to 41. That's going to be the 22%. So you can get a night, you can get a feel then for the income. Uh, thresholds and the table by looking at basically line eight over here that's going to be the uh, 440 now that would be applicable and then you can see it kind of stops at that 20 percent so you can kind of think of 20 percent as basically being the, the general number that you would use to at least to be on the like conservative side of things now note what would happen if 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 i was if we were married here we're saying we're married eric's married and jane but now we're saying let's say that jane doesn't have any any um wages or one of them doesn't have any wages right so now we only have wages for one of them and so it's still 2020 and we're still saying i'll just keep the same two w2s here but they're all they're both for, for the same spouse so if that's the case then i go back on over i'm going to go back on over and it removes it here no, no deduction because remember the rule is and this is kind of the tricky component that you need to have uh, a w2 in, or some type of income earned income for both spouses unless some unusual kind of circumstance applies so for example if we say the number of months disabled or full-time student for one of the spouses the one that doesn't have the income so i'm going to say over here we're going to say 12 months so we'll say 12 and then if i go back on over it should come back so now it's back it has been returned now so that's going to be the general rule that you gotta you gotta be careful of so i'm going to go back on over to the calculation same calculation that we see here married couple you got to have both of them have to have some of that earned income and when you do the data input into something like a lacert system that means you're going to have to apply out and make sure that you're you're telling the system that this w2 is applied to one spouse or the other so that you can check them both off and um and being able to qualify Okay, so I'm going to go back to the to the original scenario where we had like 60,000, I think, and 40,000. And then I'm going to put this one. So each spouse now has income that's coming in. So we don't have to worry about, about that problem. Let's add another dependent now. Let's add another dependent and say we add somebody else and say we have two dependents here. And so we have Tom and Sam, Sam and Tom. And we'll say that the date of birth is 0115. Uh, 2017 and we'll say social security 7777s and this is going to be a son as well so we'll say the son as well there and then i'm going to go to the 2441 then and we'll add another one so now we can have two two of these items and possibly they're going to the same organization for two separate individuals so we paid 2000 for tom but now we've got sam as well tom and sam so I'm going to add another one and say this one's going to be for Sam. Uh, hold on a second. Didn't pull over. This one's going to be for Sam. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to say that the amount that was that was put in for Sam was another 2000 as well. It's 2000 there as well. And then I'm going to put this to the same organization. So I'm going to go to the same organization and say we paid them not 2000 just for one person, but now 4000 because we got two dependents to the same organization that we paid. And then if we go back on over, let's see what happens here on our calculation. So now we've got the two, the two here at, uh, at uh, the, the 4,000. So now we have our 4,000 calculated at that 20%, which gives us that 800, which again would pull over to the second page of the 1040. 
Now we can max it out. Remember, we had 3,000 for the one person. What if I had 6,000 here for two people? And then I go back on over and I said we had 3,000 and 3,000 for the two, Sam and Tom. 3,000, 3,000 to the organization for 6,000 total. Going back over, we're still getting a benefit from that full 6,000 now times the 20%. And that's going to give us the 1,002. So we're getting a benefit from the 6,000. If I go above 6,000, it I don't think we're going to get, we're not going to get a benefit above that. So if I said we paid 4,000 for each of them, Sam and Tom, Sam and Tom, Tom, 4,000, 4,000. And that means we paid 8,000 to the institution now going back on over. Then uh, we paid, we paid, they capped us at, at the 6,000 still. So we had, we end up with the same place because they capped us at the 6,000. Even if we had another dependent, they'll cap us there. So if I had like a third dependent, we're busy over here. We got a third dependent and say, this one's going to be uh, Tim, Tim. And these aren't very rigid, but we're going to say 02, 15, uh, 16. And we'll say social security is going to be 888's relationship son. And we're going to then say, well, what would happen if we add a third one over here? And so now we have another one. I'm going to say we have another one, same organization, but another kid. And this is going to be, the name is Tim. Tim and Tom Smith and Sam. So Tim Smith, we're going to put that there. And then we paid this one another 3,000, 3, let's say. So now you'd think three, four, four, three, four, and four, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 to the organization. Same organization. So I'm going to say this is 11 to the organization. And now even though we got three different individuals, you would think you'd get three, three, and three for nine. We paid 11 for three different three different kids, but we're only getting the six. It's capping it at the six. So we got Tim, Sam, and Tom adding up to 11, but it's capping it at the six here, and, and still we're stuck at that 1,200. So if you have two or more, then it's capping it at that, at that 6,000 for the expenses and then applying the rate based on the AGI to it. Okay, so let's simplify it back down again. Let's go, okay, well, what if let's remove Tim He's not helping us any with our credit here and we'll remove Tom and we'll get, um, we'll get Sam. We'll, we'll remove Sam and get back just to Tom here. And if you go back on to the second one, you get like, we can change the, the instead of having an organization, maybe we have an, an individual like Jessica, let's say Smith here, Jessica Smith. Now we can't have really a, a dependent here typically. And you can't have the, uh, one of the spouses that would be basically qualifying. But, and you'd still need a similar information, like you need the address, but then you might not have an EIN number down here. You might have like a social security number instead. Uh, so social security number instead. And then we would be paying down, we're down to the 4,000 again that we would be paying. And then you've got your information there that would, that would basically pull over. So, but you gotta be careful when you're talking about someone who is not an organization, a qualified organization, uh, because, because you can't have like a relative that would, would be involved. And you also need to be careful if, if they work in the home, the IRS may then come to the determination that they're an employee instead of basically a, a contractor. And you should be, you know, withholding social security and Medicare and so forth, uh, for that.